Amen. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise and worship team. Bless you and thank you. Um, man, it's good to be here with family tonight. I look across and everybody that's here tonight is family and, um, you know, is believers. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I, I truly am um, <clears throat> thankful for uh, my church family and, and uh, you know, I know there's there's quite a few missing tonight that are that are here regularly, and this is their this is their um, you know their church. This is where God's planted them, and and I look at everybody in here tonight, and I know that's true with everybody in here tonight as well. Just because uh, your faithfulness for years that you've been here, a lot of you, and, and just this, and you've even said with your own mouth, this is where God's obviously planted you, and and there's several others that aren't here tonight, but I'm just thankful for uh, <laughs> for you guys, man, and. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I uh, besides my wife and my children and, um, you know, my family, I mean, you guys are the second thing that's on my mind all the time, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just being honest, the church is on my mind all the time and my heart all the time and, and, uh, and so, you know, so a lot of times we don't get up here and express, I, dad, dad kind of expressed a little bit about how he feels about the congregation this morning and it blessed me and I knew that already from him because we talk a lot, but about the congregation, about you guys and this ministry and where we're going and, and how we see, you know, so many of you guys just growing and you can see the call of God on, our, on people's lives and, and just how strong of disciples that this congregation is and how we're constantly hearing, um, you know, praise reports or some kind of story of how, you know, I led this person to Christ, I got to pray for this person, um, you know, something, just something that Jesus would do, really, you know what I mean? And something that Mark 16 says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, we're constantly hearing that scripture be played out weekly through, through you guys. And so I just want to say I'm blessed and I love you guys and I'm thankful for you guys and I'm thankful for your prayers for us. And, and uh, we're in this together. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, uh, we've still got, a, we've still got a, a, a good work to do and God's got big things for us to do and, and some of us. You know, I really believe within the next couple of years, really, to be honest with you, some of us in this building alone, maybe even all of us in this building, I don't know, but um, I feel like God's getting ready to stretch a lot of us, and uh, <clears throat> He's going to start, um, now this is prophetic, I just kind of shifted over into that right now, I didn't plan on saying this, but I believe, and it's probably for me too, what I'm getting ready to say, but, well, I know it is, but. Um, he's getting ready to start asking us to do some things that we don't feel comfortable with. Yeah, I know, probably already has. You're right. And me, even me, too. He's been kind of dropping some things in my heart, and I'm just kind of like, all right, Lord, really? I don't know, man, you know. Uh, but, but, you know, honestly, we don't have anything to fear. If God calls us, he's going to take care of us. You know, if he calls you to go to Pakistan right now, that would be the safest place you could ever be on the face of the earth for this moment if he told you to do that right now. You know what I mean? So he's going to take care of us, but he's, he's getting ready to stretch a lot of us and um, just be ready to stretch. Now, I don't know what that means fully. Uh, it could be in your prayer life, could be your outreach life, your, 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 you know, whatever, your ministry. I don't know what it is, but just, just listen and he'll show you what to do. And, just, and sometimes, you know, he, he, he ain't going to grab us like a mom and dog does sometimes with their puppies by the nap of the neck, you know, he ain't always going to do that to us. He'll expect us to take that first step. He'll tell us, but he'll take, huh? Yeah, he'll prompt us, he'll speak to us, but he'll, he'll wait for us to take that first step. Have you ever done that in your life where you knew that God was dealing with you about something and finally you're like, all right, Lord, and you took that first step and it was like, boom, he was right alongside with you and he's right with you. And things just flowed and did, you know. Well, that's, that's where we're at, and I believe that. The Lord spoke to me tonight during praise and worship, and He said this to me. He said that, and, and I'll say it a couple times here, but He said this. He said, we are in a season of decreeing and seeing. We are in a season of decreeing and seeing. And I said, all right, thank you, Lord. That's good. Praise God. And then He said, well, wait, here, one more. And then He said, start expecting to see what you decree. <laughs> we are in a season of decreeing and seeing. And then he said, start expecting to see what you decree. Amen. 
And here about a year and a half, two years ago, he gave me that scripture, Isaiah 21, 6, where it says to be that watchman, to, you stand, to stand on that wall and declare and speak and decree what the Lord is showing you. Yeah. Amen? And so um, <clears throat> that's a scripture there, Isaiah 21, 6. That's a good one to, to, to have there concerning decreeing and seeing and saying and all that kind of stuff. But also you can line up the famous scripture, Proverbs 18, 20, 20 and 21, about death and life from the power of the tongue, you know, and you can curse a thing or you can bless a thing. Amen. And, um, you know, I know I was talking with uh, Sister Pat before service tonight. We were having a chat and we were just kind of talking about a little bit of how the Lord is just, you know, we were talking kind of, actually I was doing more of the talking. She was just kind of listening. But, <laughs> but I was talking about how, um, you know, the Lord has just been dealing with us, with, with me and with other people I've been talking to about our mouths, you know, about what we're saying, you know, and, and, and really paying attention to just that little, little, thing that we might not think is no big deal, but it is just saying it, how it can cause damage or destruction or, you know, so if we can cause damage and destruction and death with our tongue, we can cause life and blessing and health, praise God, with our tongue as well, amen? amen. And so, you know, um, it's so easy to get wrapped up in what's going on around us in our lives and other people and, and the world, the politics, the other issues, the, the this and that and, and all this kind of stuff. But we need to start just kind of seeing and focusing on what the Lord is saying to us in this time, in this season. Amen. And, uh, you know, here, uh, Pastor Tony Kroger here, uh, it's been two years ago uh, when he was here. Uh, not this last Glory Conference we had, but the one before. He preached a message on um, <clears throat> our faith. And he preached a message on getting our faith in agreement, getting, getting our tongue in agreement with our faith. And uh, the Lord, I didn't. I came here tonight. I, I was kind of being led to speak on a, something kind of different tonight. But when I got here, the Lord changed it all, like He always does. That's why usually I don't even plan anything before I get here. And I just, I just kind of reading some scriptures this afternoon. I felt kind of like the Lord was leading me in a direction, but He just kind of changed it all. But He was um, talking about hooking our tongue up with our faith. Yeah. Amen. And. Um, <clears throat> He talked out of there out of 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6. It talks about fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. And then it goes on uh, there in, um, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 and 24. It talks about hold fast the confession of your faith. And then it talks about stirring up love and good works. Actually, let's just, let's just go ahead and turn over there real quick. Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> let's just turn over there real quick. Look at that. I kind of want to look at that. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's for sure. Yeah, you were in he no, you were in Hebrews 12, weren't you today? Yeah, you were in Hebrews. Oh, hurry up and turn there. I said that. Oh, oh, I said let's hurry up. And okay, yeah, I get what you're saying. All right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. It says, "Let us hold fast." the confession of our hope or our faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love, uh, excuse me, love, love, Barry White, love, in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I wrote in here, we can stir up God and the Holy Ghost with love. Yes. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a wild thing, and, and the Lord's been talking to me about this a little bit, and I know that, I know that we are taught to um, reach the lost and to go get the lost, and Dad kind of talked about that a little bit this morning. You know, uh, some of us have that gift of evangelism where we can go out, man, and we can get a doorknob saved. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's that easy. I mean, there's just people. I know people like that, man. Some of you in here are like that. You can just walk up to somebody, and they're like, lead me to Jesus. I mean, like, one minute into the conversation, I've seen it, you know. And I go up to people, and it's just kind of like, they just kind of like look at me. You know what I mean? And, you know, and that's fine. We, we have different gifts and callings and things like that. And so we stay in, you know, we try to stay with that gift that God's given us. But sometimes God will use us to reach out and that gift of evangelism will come on us and we'll be able to bring people in. But, 
But a lot, of, a lot of times we think about the loss, we think about the loss, we think about the loss, and there's nothing wrong with that. But these scriptures here are talking about us stirring each other up. See, if, if, if some, now I can say this because I know everybody here, but let's just say some, someone came in tonight that I've never met before. They were lost. They're not a Christian. They're a sinner. They're, they're not saved yet. They're just kind of out there in the world. They came in. Well, uh, you know, uh, a lot of this stuff I'm talking about tonight, about stirring up love between one another, they would not understand one word I'm talking about. They need to hear the gospel first. And when they hear the gospel and get saved, then they need to be discipled, just like we're still being discipled, amen? We're growing from glory to glory, amen? Yeah. But, but, you know, I, we read a lot of this in Scripture. I mean, you can see the Apostle Paul, he's constantly going to the church, and he's saying, listen, church, you need to pray for one another. You need to love one another. You need to keep sin out of the camp. If somebody's bringing sin in the camp, you need to pull them aside. You need to deal with them. You need to talk with them and try to correct them and bring them back into where they need to be in the body of Christ. And if they don't, then you've got to let them go. You know, Paul is constantly looking at the church, trying to get the church to serve one another, to bless one another, to love one another, to help one another. And the reason why he does that and the reason why he's doing that, if you'll read that there where he does that in those, those several letters that he writes and all that, when he does that, it's for one thing, and it's because he knows that if they'll do that, the power of God, the love of God, the glory of God will spread out in that region yeah, yeah. because people will look, people that are on the outside looking in at us, they'll see, boy, these people really do love one another. Boy, these people really do have something that I really need. That I see peace. I see health. I see strength on their life. Amen. Amen. And part of, of what I'm talking about tonight is if we can, as a church, as a church body, I'm not talking about the whole body of Christ. Yes, we need to have unity with the whole body of Christ. We need to walk as one. We need to love Jesus, follow God, and all that. But I'm talking about this body here. If we'll learn, and I know we're learning it because I, I see a lot of people doing it now, so I'm just kind of encouraging you. Maybe you heard this a little bit tonight. But if we will get our mouths together and speak what God is saying through the leadership here of where this ministry is going, and we'll grab a hold of that because we love it and because we want to see people be blessed and we want to see others uh, come into the knowledge and the love of Christ, if we'll hook our mouths up together in unity and start speaking over this ministry and what God has for this city, praise God, we will come into the fullness of God. And one of those things that... Uh, <clears throat> see... It says in here that it says in the word that we are supposed to stir each other up. Yes. Yes. We're to stir that gift. You know, that gift that Bonner has in his life. It's my job as not only his friend, but as his brother in Christ to just say, man, I, you can do it, man. I know you can do it. Just keep on going, man. God's got good things in store, you know. Amen. What does that do? That stirs up faith in him that stirs up you know what actually I, that's true mike yeah i know that is right i can yeah. you know it stirs that <clears throat> that 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 intuition on the i guess that's where i could use on the inside of you that you know that god's got a plan and what am i doing and it talks about that in, in proverbs i think it's proverbs 26 or Pro proverbs 27 it says that iron sharpens iron yes. <clears throat> that we sharpen each other <clears throat> that's why paul always like Come on. I mean, even where he says, he says, I, I pray in tongues more than y'all. When he Who's he writing to? The church of Ephesus there? What's that? Or Phil, Phil, the Corinthians. I pray in tongues more than y'all. What's Paul doing to that church? He's saying, look, folks, get stirred up. I'm trying to stir you up. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Because there's a reason for that. So everything that Paul did, he did in love, and he was trying to encourage the church. He was trying to get them to be built up in faith so that they could accomplish what God had put them there in that region or that territory, that area, had put them there for. See, God, listen, God put you in Madeira or wherever you live. So I know some, some folks in here from other towns, Fresno, Chowchilla, but God has put you in your place or in your city or in your region there, your territory, your neighborhood. He's put you there for a purpose, and He's put you there mainly for people. And you might not ever, you might, you might have lived on the same street for 20 years and maybe only led one person to Christ out of that whole time. But you led that one person to Christ. 
But think about how many other people you've been able to love on just by simply being nice to them, kind to them, having mercy on them, yeah. compassion on them, which that's totally Jesus. Yes. So one thing God's been really, really hammering me about, man, is compassion. Yes. I mean, just pounding me every day. It's like, compassion, Mike, compassion, Mike, compassion, Mike, compassion, Mike, compassion. You want, you know, Mike, you've been crying out to me and wanting me to use you. Compassion. Your compassion will start bringing people. And I said, okay, Lord. And, and we know that and, you know, and all that. But, but, but sometimes you just got to make that shift. You love compassion. You want to be compassionate. You do want to help people. But there's sometimes, you know how you, you just kind of get a hold of something finally? You're like, okay, Lord, yeah. So I started, I've started walking in that more than I ever have before towards people. And you know what's amazing is people are starting to be more attracted to me. Someone's like, well, duh, Mike. I mean, come on, you know. But it's awesome how all of a sudden your phone is constantly, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? I got this. God starts bringing all these people to you because you, he sees the compassion in you. And there's a lot of people in here. I know you walk in compassion. I see it all over you. It's obvious. But I'm just saying that that's one of the lessons I think that as a church, if we'll learn how to just try to live our day Throughout the day, as we go about our business in compassion for people, I think we'll be able to be used a lot more by God. Yeah. There'll be a lot more opportunity for us to, to minister to people and to witness to people or just to love on people. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but when Pastor Tony was here, he was talking about faith, talking about hooking up, his, hooking up our tongues to, to, to our faith and this and that. And he, there was a statement that he had made that really blessed me. And he said... <clears throat> He said, as a congregation, talking about this congregation, as a congregation, we need to speak the same. What is God doing and going to do? What is God going to do in Madeira and what is God going to do through this ministry? See, it isn't about dad, mom, me, the leadership. It isn't about us. It's about all of us. All of us. When I say this ministry, this, I say, I'm saying you, you guys. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Everyone that's hooked in here, this is their church. They've planted themselves here. That's all, it's all, it means all of us. Even if we don't come every service or <clears throat> we're only able to come certain times because of work or, or whatever, but this is our church. We've locked and loaded ourselves here. This is us. This is who I'm talking about tonight. And here's one of the main things. Now, God might be showing you some things and speaking to you some things personally about this ministry and this congregation where he wants you to declare and say, then you go for it, go for it. Yeah, that, that's what we want you to do. But one of the main things he's been saying here, and I want to get this over to you tonight because I want you to hook up with this and I want you to start, as you think about it, either on a daily basis or every other day or when it comes to your mind throughout the week or whatever, I want you to start speaking, like Dad said this morning, that this place is a hospital Amen. and that people are going to come and be attracted to this place. They're going to come get healing. They're going to come get deliverance. And they're going to come and get their lives saved. Yeah. That's one thing I want you to get a hold of tonight that I want you to start hooking your mouth up with. And, and whenever you think about it, and you start speaking that yeah. over this place. Because... <clears throat> I really believe this, and if I'm wrong, Dad can correct me on this, but I really believe that we are, right now, prepared and ready for people to come. I really believe that. And I'm not looking at um, how structured we are, uh, how much of a, you know, uh, is the praise and worship good enough? Is the children's church good enough? Do we have enough nursery? That's not even what I'm looking at. I'm looking at you and saying, we're ready. I believe we're ready for more people to come. If 100 people came into this place right now and said, I want prayer, well, guess what? Everybody right here, stand up, get up here, start laying hands on people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm serious. That's what this is about. That's what I'm looking forward to. I ain't looking forward to me running the show. That has nothing to do with it. I'm looking forward to watching... 
the people that are here that have been trained all, these, all this time, all of us in here are seasoned and ready to go. I don't care how you look at yourself. Stop that. You're ready to do the will of the Lord. You're ready to cast out devils. You're ready to raise the dead. You're ready to lay hands on the sick. You're ready to lead people in the prayer of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're ready to lead people to Jesus. Everyone in here can do it. See, and that's the vision that I have right now. That's the vision I know Dad has right now. That's the vision I know Mom has right now. We know that they, I mean, listen, they planted this church in 1983 and been going strong ever since. Yeah. You'd be amazed. See, because I have a lot of people contacting me wanting to come preach here. It's been happening now for about two years. And um, I, I'm not kidding you. A lot of people. And um, some people, I just have to say, you know, we, I, we, right now we just can't. We gotta, we, we, you'd be surprised how many people are asking um, you know, if, if the Lord wants us to have you, we'll have you come in. You know, you have to do that sometimes. It's just the way it is. I mean, you can't have people all the time. We have a good amount of guest speakers. But you'd be amazed at some of these people when they start asking about the church. Well, how, blah, blah, blah. And when I tell them when the church was pioneered, almost, almost every time they go, wow, you guys have been there a long time. They almost can't believe it. Yeah, and what that says to me is just a lot of places have just kind of, I mean, I guess dried up or, or whatever, or, you know, whatever. But mom and dad knew that they were called here. Yeah. You know, I was nine years old. We moved here. I didn't understand that. I just, okay, we're moving, you know. And I hated it at first, to be honest with you. I didn't want to go to the schools up here. I didn't want to go. I couldn't stand it. It was different from where I came from. I'll just be honest with you. I came from Clovis. It was just different. At first, and I was a young kid, and I didn't understand. All I know is we left people, and we live up here in the country in the middle of nowhere, and I don't know who the, there's coyotes running around, and I don't know what the heck's going on out here, man. What's the deal, you know? Kids threatening to beat us up. I don't even know who they are, whatever, you know what I mean? But, <clears throat> you know, we moved up here, but, but we've been going strong ever since then, and we've watched God over the years. And when I, when I finally, I, I guess, I don't know, probably, you know, in my 20s, I finally realized, okay, there's, there's something going on here. This is, a, this, is, this is for real. This isn't just church. Mom and dad have been called here, and I know people are going to start coming. And I started kind of seeing that vision in my early 20s, you know. And ever since then, and I'm 42 now, and it's grown, obviously, since then. As far as vision and the times and seasons and things we've gone through and all that, all of us as individuals. But as far as this, this church, this congregation, this ministry here, the Believer's Church, I'm telling you that we are... Right now, that's why God's wanting us to declare that over this place, that this place is a hospital and that people are coming. Look, let me share a story. They asked me to share this. The food ministry asked me to share this. There was a lady, and let me just give you an example of, of, of how uh, this is, there, there's, there's, things that are, there's things that happen behind the scene that a lot of us don't know about. Um, but every Thursday we feed and give clothes, clothes, and here about three months ago, this lady came in, it was, it was a grandmother, and she was concerned because her grandson was missing, and he'd been missing for a good while, and he was into drugs and all that, and, and he'd been missing for a good while, and they were really concerned and scared that he was probably dead somewhere, or something happened because he'd been gone for a good while, and this has been a few months back, and here, what was it, uh, last week she came in? Last, last Thursday, this lady came in, and she, she said, do you remember me? And of course, they, yeah, we prayed for you. She said... Well, my grandson, they found my, my grandson came back, and he's in a program, and he's serving the Lord. That's awesome. Yeah. What was so neat that when we prayed for her grandson, we had declared that he was just going to fall down on the sidewalk and give his heart to the Lord, and that's exactly what he did. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. And he went, he went searching for he went searching for a place. And can I say another thing? Yeah. I no, no. That, that's that's uh, what it's about. With the food ministry there, and you're talking about a hospital here. Why don't you stand up and turn around so okay. they can hear what you're saying? Ago, when I walked into the food ministry, the Lord told me, I want you to coincide with what's been stated here, that this is a hospital. Hmm. Amen. And he said, to declare the food ministry a full hospital clinic. <laughs> and, Amen. and so we declared that 
And when we opened up the doors for people, I stood there and I yelled, this hospital clinic is open <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody that needs anything, prayer for anything, any healing, we are here now, yeah. open. Yeah. So every week the Lord's been telling me to announce that Praise as God. we open the doors for people to come in. There it is. Amen. And, and we've that's, seen, that's part of it. Yeah. And we've seen more and more people come in. And we've had people come in and they've just gone, wow. You know, the, <laughs> the power, power of God, God hit them. so strong. Yeah. And we've been having healings. And we've, uh, there's been some people that have come to the Lord. Yep. And it's yeah. just really, really tremendous. Right. Amen. And that's, that's part of this, this congregation, this vision, the vision that, 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 you know, Dad said several years back, the Lord told him that, that you'll, if, if you'll feed this community, what did he say? He said, what you do concerning the poor will dictate what you do concerning how, you, uh, how effective you are in ministry here. And that's the truth. And we've been doing that for a while. I mean, just last Thursday as well, you know, we've been, like Royce has said, that they've been decreeing that and declaring that people would come. Well, we have been too over the past couple months. Uh, and I'm, we're, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit, but tonight I'm really trying to get it in you because cause I, I really want us to start as a congregation, start speaking in unity over that. It's like Tony said, it stirred me up that time when he said that. And he said, if we can just get our mouths lined up with what, uh, what the vision is here or what the leadership is saying here where we're at, if we'll get our, our hearts in unity and our tongues in unity and begin to speak what God is doing and what he wants to do. Amen. So we need to do that. Just, you know, we've been doing that. Well, like we had another, there was another incident that happened and I'm not going to harp on this incident, but, but uh, on Thursday, the same day on Thursday, you know, see, we have a lot of people in this area. A lot of you guys are, are some of you are just come down here mostly on the weekends. Some of you come during the week, so you kind of see uh, what's going on around here. But we have a lot of homeless people. We have a lot of people that are on drugs, a lot of people that are alcoholics, a lot of people that are just full-blown demonized. I mean, we run into a lot of people uh, like that. And some of them don't want help. Some you have to throw out physically. Sometimes you just have to, or you have to threaten them. I mean, I'm just being honest with you sometimes because, or call the police, or because you don't know what they're going to do. But sometimes there are people that do want help. And we had a young man that came here on Thursday that I believe he wanted help, but the police and the ambulance people showed up uh, at the wrong time. And we, we had, uh, Royce had to stop, and Brian had to stop. But, but we had a young man that was uh, out in front, and he was in full, he was in manifestation is what it was. And he, he, was, he was doubled over right in front of our door, a young kid. He was probably in his early 20s at least, probably. I mean, he wasn't very old. You want to tell it? <laughs> Here, give him, give him the microphone so he can hear. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is because I want you guys to see, because we've been decreeing this and things have started to, to kind of escalate a little bit around here. <laughs> okay, what happened was uh, Becca saw this man out there. It was all doubled over, and she asked him if he, if he needed help and if he wanted a hospital and all that, and she asked me if I'd go out there. And I went and asked him, do you need help? Do you want to be prayed for? And, and he said, yes. Well, here, hold it up a little closer. Here. Okay. There you go. I, uh, <clears throat> so I, I laid my hands on him, <clears throat> and uh, I started to pray for him, and he said, and all of a sudden, he came out in a different voice, and said, stop that, you're choking me. So we, we just stared, <laughs> yeah. we just stared eye to eye, and he started, he started to speak, and I started to tell him to be quiet, but the Lord told me to let him speak. And he, he looked at me, and he said, I know who you are, and you've cast us out. And he was speaking of, the Lord told me, he was speaking of them being cast out of heaven. Ah, and, right. And uh, <clears throat> so I started to speak to him. He, well, first he was saying, he was rattling on about the fact, because the Lord told, him, told me to let him <coughs> speak, about the fact that man didn't know what they were doing, that they had been here for centuries, that they were causing havoc in the world. They were in every civilization and in every government from the top to the bottom that uh, they considered man like ants and they said ants were even better because ants knew what they were doing they had a purpose in what they were yeah, doing. Yeah so the demons were just yeah. But man 
They have man so confused that man just runs in circles and doesn't know what he's doing or doesn't even know his purpose. And <coughs> that's, that's what the, the demon, demon was saying. saying. Yeah. So I started telling the demon to come out. He started throwing his hands up in his face, and every once in a while he'd scream and fall back, and I could sense some demons that had come out of him. And then all of a sudden he wouldn't look at me anymore, and he was like getting down like this, and just covering his eyes. And he said, don't look at me. He said, I am free. You can stop. You can leave me alone. Yeah, right. Well, I knew for a fact he wasn't because <laughs> he was trying to tell me he was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, and, you know, <laughs> demons are nothing but liars. So, right. And uh, so I just said again, come out. And it was about that time when the sheriff's department and the yeah. uh, got him. But I think we could have. Got everything out of there. I don't know how many spirits he had in there, but he had quite a few. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and I've asked the Lord if, if, the, if the young man wants help to bring him back. And I've you know. asked that too. And I also, when, when they were speaking to him, and uh, before he ended, they ended up letting him go, I walked over towards him, and I said, the Lord is with you. Let God be with you. And I told, and, and I prayed yeah. that uh, there was a, the Spirit of God was stuck in there in the nooks and crannies and going to start <laughs> pulling all the yes. garbage out of him, and every Amen. one of those demons is going to leave, and he's going to be fully delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 No, it's okay. I'll put it over here. Amen. And that's, you know, and I know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of us have, you know, experienced maybe something like that, or you have talked with people, but see, that's what I'm saying if we'll, start to, it's, if we'll start decreeing that, people will start being attracted, not only to you when you're out in the marketplace, but they'll start being attracted to where, see, look, because there's a well here. There's, 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 there's a river of love in this place. There really is. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, I think, I believe that a lot of us that are here right, even tonight understand the love of God. And, and you have compassion, you have mercy on people. Uh, you do want to serve people. You do want to help people. You do want to love on people. You want to bless people. You want to share. You want to encourage, exhort. You know, I believe that. And see, God honors that. He'll honor that heart motive in your life towards others. You know, and um, the best thing we could do is, is, is give compassion to somebody. <laughs> You know, we're not people that just get ran over and, and whatever and this and that. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, if we will approach people with love and approach people with compassion, even if they don't agree or don't like us, and even if they cuss us out and walk away from us, as long as we approach them with compassion because you left a part of Jesus Amen. there. Hallelujah. See, I, I want people to see Jesus. I don't want them to see Mike Purcell. I want something to touch them that no human being can even offer or do. Amen. I want the Spirit of God, like that anointing, that shadow that was on Peter, you know what I mean? I want that to be what people feel, sense, see, hear. I want that. I want a super, to be honest with you, I want a, it has to be a supernatural manifestation of the love of God that's going to touch people. Because we can't say enough words out of our own natural minds, our own natural lives to, to, to uh, catch people and pull them in. We can't do it. It's got to be God. It's got to be a divine appointment. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. It's got to be a prompting. You know? And I think that that's why you know, when I try to go out and do that, it's, it, it doesn't work a lot. It's when I'm just minding my own business and all of a sudden, boom, you hear the voice of God and here it is. You know what I mean? Or like Royce, you see that opportunity there and you go for it yeah. you know what I mean and he did the best he could do the most he could do for that moment and that time that doesn't mean that that young man will never come back here that doesn't mean that that young man will go find somebody else and get help I don't know but the spirit he, he the spirit of the Lord touched that young man for a moment there yeah. and we're believing God that that spirit of God stays with him and he's able to get help yeah. Yeah. amen and it's not like we're going out it's not like we need to go out and look for devils they do, pretty much. But it's, 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 
we're not always going to have to cast a devil out of somebody. I mean, you're going to do that, I think, a lot less than you are uh, praying for somebody or something, you know, just a, a general prayer or something, prayer of faith or whatever. But we've got to be ready for that kind of stuff. You know, and everybody in here can do that if they have to do it. And it's very simple. In Jesus' name, come out. And that's it. You know, don't, what's your name, you know? How long have you been in there? What's your birth date? You know, you don't ask the demon all these stupid questions. You just tell it to come out, you know? Yeah, if I give you a pizza, you know. There was, I heard of one story one time. I think it was, it was either Norval Hayes. I think it was Norval Hayes where he, he had, he, 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 this demon, young man was demon possessed. And, and they took him into this room and he had his, uh, he was out of the office or whatever. So he, he told his workers, you guys get in there. You guys cast the devil out of this guy and this and that. And I don't have time. I'm going to be gone and I'll be gone for most of the day or whatever. So he left. And when he came back into the office later on during the day, they were still in there dealing with this guy. And it ticked him off, and he walked in there, and, and, and I think the guy was eating a hamburger. When, wasn't the man eating a hamburger or something like that when he walked in or something like that? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the, the young man was eating a hamburger or something like some kind of fast food meal. And Norval Hayes walked in, and he asked him, what the, what's this guy doing over here eating? You haven't cast a devil? No, and they said, he, he said that the, the, the devil would come out if he could have a hamburger or eat or something like that. <laughs> And he thought, get out. He kicked the guys out, and he took care of it and cast the devil out. The devil left, like, almost immediately, and the guy was free. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> you hear wild stories like that. It's like, what? You know? But, uh, you know, it's just a simple thing where you let the love of Lord, the Lord pour out with you. The devil can't handle the love of God. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. The Bible says love casts out fear. I mean, listen, it, 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 the love of God is all-consuming, man. And we sing about that at the worship sometimes, all-consuming fire. You know, you're my heart's desire. You know, all-consuming love, you know. And so it's, it's a thing where this, this ministry here, I, I haven't seen the fullness of it like Dad talks about a little bit. Um, I have seen... Uh, little blips and things like that about what God wants to do here. And I've seen a lot of us uh, uh, working here in this city, you know, preaching the gospel and, and just being uh, carriers of the glory, amen, and blessing people and helping people. Seen a lot of uh, branches from this tree here go out and minister and things like that. I've seen a lot of stuff. Just recently here, about three weeks ago, I had a vision, just a mini vision, uh, during praise and worship here at church. And what I saw was all of a sudden I was out in the front of this church and I was in the street and I was on this stage and there was a mass of Hispanic people on the street, and I was up there, and I was preaching the gospel with, an inter with a Spanish interpreter, and there was people laying out in sick beds, they were sick, they looked oh, yeah. diseased, a lot of people, and there was like a healing revival that was happening, and people were getting healed, and all kinds of stuff was happening out in the street, I saw that, and I wasn't thinking about that at the time, I was just hearing praise and worship, and all of a sudden, boom, I saw this picture, and I thought, wow, you know, and it's not about me. If that happens, believe me, I'll be on the phone and I'll be calling every single one of you that are here and then some saying, make sure you're here this night because we need everybody. Amen. If you can come, we need you to minister to people. Because if there's that many people, we're going to need help. Amen? Amen? But see, we know, me and dad understand, and mom understand that we're here to disciple, to lead, and to feed. And to encourage, to bless, to teach the word to build, this, build each other up, to help each other, encourage each other. But we're also here to reach the world Amen. from here. Amen. And the love of God will go abroad. Yeah. Right. Amen. And um, a lot of us, you know, we get attacked by the enemy, and I'm not going to harp and focus on that, but, you know, some of us in here, you know, I can't speak for everybody, I don't know, but some of us in here, including myself, have been going through a pretty rough year. This year's been pretty rough. And you might, you might, you might even be still going through some stuff right now, you know, or whatever. And there's people that, are, that, are here, that aren't here tonight that I know just by talking to them personally and things that they've been going through some pretty rough time, and the devil's really been attacking. And um, I know why he's attacking as hard as he is, because he knows. He knows that he is, like mom always says, a drowning man grasping for straws, man. 
His ship is sinking. Amen. And see, we can't focus on the attacks. We've got to focus on what Jesus has done and who we really are. And we've, maybe there's things that we've got to learn personally about faith or about authority or whatever, and that's fine because I'm learning that right now myself in certain areas, and I'm growing in certain areas. What used to bother me a year ago, you know, isn't bothering me not even close to what it was. So I'm growing. I can understand that. I can only speak for myself. I'm growing in that. I, I can see fruit, and I'm understanding some stuff. I'm getting a hold of some stuff. Um, I'll put it this way. I'm better off now, right now, than I was a year ago concerning fear, anxiety, and panic. I'll just put it to you that way. I'm understanding what that is, where it comes from, why it comes, and how it comes. Yes. God showed me that. So I've had tremendous deliverance and help in that area in my own personal life. But the devil's been attacking, and, and a lot of us maybe are still going through some stuff right now. But I'm saying by the Spirit of the Lord tonight, get your eyes off that. And get your eyes on what the Lord has been saying to you t these past several months. Yes. And I'll tell you, Dad talked about today, talking about pulling that sword out. You know, that word, whatever that word the Lord has given you, that scripture or whatever it is to speak over your life or your kids or your family or your situation, whatever it is, if you'll pull that sword out, every time the devil says something to you, if you'll pull that sword out and you'll stick him with the word, right. he'll shut up. Amen. And he'll finally leave you alone in that area. I'm just, he will. He'll, he'll, he'll leave. And that pressure that he used to put on you won't be that, as, as big as, 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 as it used to be, the pressure. Right. You'll learn how to overcome that, right. is what I'm saying. His attacks will always be there. He'll always mouth off. He'll always try something. But you'll grow and learn how to diffuse it before it becomes, before it's an anthill, before it becomes a mountain. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so the devil's under our feet, praise God. We trample on him. He's under our feet. The Bible says in Ephesians that we've been, sit, we've been seated together in Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And it says that we've been raised up far above. That means the devil's below us. He's underneath us. It's over with. He's done. He's not even a concern. He's not even an issue anymore. He's defeated. Amen? And so, I know, I know that I know that I know. And see, listen, I'm just being honest. I, it's like, the body, I, 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 I pray for the body of Christ. I pray that there's unity. I pray that God will use people. But mostly, my mind and my heart is on this body. Yeah. Because this is where I'm at. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, so I, I know that some of you have been going through some stuff, and things have been happening, and this and that, just because we've talked or whatever. But I'm telling you right now, the reason why that's happening is because you are involved in a ministry. You are involved in a walk with God that is getting ready to explode. And the covers are getting ready to be pulled off the enemy in this town. I'm telling you. And God is going to use you personally to go into this, these areas and bring light into darkness and bring deliverance where there's bondage. That's why. The devil is scared. The devil isn't scared of some person that's trying to keep a bunch of religious rules. Right. Yep. That don't make him nervous at all. Exactly. He just leaves them alone. They're already in bondage. And he, he, right. he's good. But the ones like us that are wild and have that wild look in our eyes yeah. and that hate the devil, right. that's who he comes after. But he can come after all he wants. He cannot touch. You keep the door closed on him. You walk in love. You walk in forgiveness. You walk in relationship with the Father like Enoch was so strong that he might just take you out of here. Amen. Try to get that close to God. Let that be your goal. Amen. Amen. So let's look here. I want to read these scriptures. I'll wind it up here. 1 Peter. Look over in 1 Peter. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter uh, 4. You see here. First Peter chapter four. Let's look, let's start over at verse seven. First Peter chapter four, verse seven. <clears throat> it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, 
Have fervent love for one another. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now. You want to talk about having peace? Walk in love with your fellow brother and sister in Christ. Amen. The devil cannot penetrate love. There is no love in him. He cannot penetrate God, and God is love, and God is on the inside of you, and if you walk in the love of God, he can, all he can do is go, boo, outside the window. That's all the effect he can have. You can stand outside my window and go, boo, all you want. I'll just close the drapes and go to bed. It won't bother me at all. If that makes sense, you know what I mean? I mean, it doesn't matter. So it says, fervent love for one another. Love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. <laughs> That's a pretty crazy scripture right there. Think about that one for a second. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. That's a good one. Lord, I need more revelation on that one. Give me some revelation on that. Verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. As God's stewards of the manifold grace of God. That word uh, stewards there, uh, talking about that in verse 10 there, it says it denotes Christians in general using the gifts entrusted to them by the Lord for the strengthening and encouragement of fellow believers. Guys, we are to look out for one another. We are to look out for one another. We should have interest in each other. We really should. Now, let's just be honest. If we get over into our minds and our natural thinking... Our mind and our natural thinking will always find something about someone that we don't like. It, it just, it will. Bonner's my best friend. I've known him since we were in kindergarten. Um, I, you know, I, I, could, I could tell things to him that are personal that, that I know no, that he would never, uh, uh, you know, break trust and tell people personal things. But there's even things I don't like about him. Just kidding. No what I should say is there's things I've disagreed with with him. That's what I meant to say. I didn't say it. I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. I mean, we've even shared clothes growing up because we had to sometimes. You know what I mean? So we're friends, man. We love each other. You know, he didn't have, you know, shorts or something. Here you go, bud. You know, you know. Whatever. Spent the night for two days, only had one pair of clothes. Can't wear the same pair of two days. I mean, he would, but I wouldn't. But anyways, you know, that's one of the things. You know what I mean? That's just, I don't understand that. But anyways, but there's been things that we've disagreed on over the years, you know, but I still love him. You know, and those little things, maybe, maybe he, he thinks another way than I think. That doesn't mean that we, we can't love each other in the love of the Lord. I mean, there's things that my dad disagrees with me, how, certain things, that, there's things, but we still love each other as father and son and still love each other as, as in the love of the Lord and keep that right. Amen. You know, me and Monica, there's things that I don't like about her that she does, there's things she don't like about me that I do, but I still love her. Yeah. I'd still give my life for her yeah. if I had to, you know what I mean? So there's that, there's that bond, that love of God that we need to have for one another. Our interests, we should be thinking about our brothers and sisters. Amen. And what, how we can bless them. How can we pray for them? How can we love them when we see them in need or in trouble? And I know that we can't you know, personally do everything for everybody all the time. I get that because that would just be too much and that's just that's overload and, and all that. One thing I'm having to learn how to do, and maybe some of you are learning how to do this too, but I'm learning how to do it as a pastor or as a minister, is I cannot carry everything that everybody's going through on me. Because I've, it, I'm telling you, that has messed me up before. It's brought me down into the dumps because it was just overloaded. You know, feeling bad for this person because they're having to go through this and this person. And, and, and Lord, how do I even pray for this person? And all these different needs at once. And I've even gone to dad. I'm like, man, and just broken and crying and just felt broke down because it's like, I, I just, you know, and it's like, Mike, you can't fix people. All you can do is pray. So we're not to take on each other's burdens, 
but we can pray for each other. We can have interest in each other. Okay, so let me get to this. This, this is good what we're reading here. And then it says in verse 11, so it says, If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, <coughs> let, him do it as, or let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things may God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Now listen to verse 12. Beloved, do not think it is strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Now, it says here, strange concerning the fiery trial, or you could say the crisis maybe you're in right now. Maybe you're in a crisis right now. Now, let me read the definition of crisis to you. This is in the Webster's Dictionary. The word crisis means a time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. A time when a difficult or important decision must be made. Or the turning point of a disease when an important change takes place, indicating either recovery or death. But I want to focus on the first one. A time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. That's what the word crisis means. Now, see, as you serve the Lord, you're going to go through some stuff that isn't fun. Okay? Whether it's just a blatant, flat-out side punch from the devil to you, or maybe it's just something you've opened the door to, or whatever, or you're believing a lie from the enemy, you're going to go through a crisis, you're going to go through a trial, you're going to go through some rough, rough waters sometime. When I went through the chemo in 2008, on the outside, people hear that, they're like, oh my God, and it wasn't fun, but I'll tell you, I had as much peace that year that I've ever had in my life. I know that sounds crazy and strange maybe to some of you, <clears throat> but I had peace going through that trial. But it was a trial. It tested my patience. It tested my love walk. It tested my faith. It tested, do I believe Isaiah 53, 5? Do I believe 1 Peter 2, 24? What do I really believe? That's what it tested. <clears throat> and one of the main things, and I'm, I'm being honest with you, I got a paper at home that I even laminated. So I would, ne it would never get messed up. Hopefully. Of prayers and words from the people throughout that year. In this church and abroad. Things they said to me, things they prayed for me, words they gave me. The prayers of the saints is what kept me. That's what we're talking about tonight. Loving one another. There's certain, some of you sitting in this place, some of the things you said, you don't know it, but I went home and I wrote it down. I got it on paper. And I held on to that like it was my last meal. So we go through things, we go through trials, we go through crisis. Now, in the Hebrew, whenever there's a word in Hebrew, there's always a picture next to it. That kind of gives a better explanation. You can see it, not only the word, but you can see what it is. And the word crisis, in Hebrew, the picture next to it is a birthing stool that a woman would sit on to give birth. Now, I want you to catch this for a second. You want to come explain it? <laughs> no, that's great. I'm glad you got it. Because when I heard this, it changed my life. When you're going through a crisis, how many of you women would believe that when you're giving birth, it's like a crisis? I mean, it's like, I don't know, because I'm not, I don't understand. Beyond all crisis. Probably. That's what Hannah said. I just believe her. She had four. She knows what she's talking about, okay? So, it's a crisis. But you're getting ready to give birth to that child or that breakthrough or whatever, however you want to describe it. Worth it. It's worth it. So the picture in Hebrew of the word crisis or trial is a picture of a stool that a woman would sit on to give birth. That stuff that you've been going through or that stuff that you are going through or that stuff that you went through, 
During that process, you're giving birth and you're getting ready to birth what God has fully created you. That's why the devil turns the heat up. Because he wants you to just say, forget it, I quit. Can't quit in the middle of a birth. See, that's how stupid the devil is. Can't put it back. Yeah. Too much information. TMI. <laughs> but when you're going through that, see, you know, with me as an example, with the fear and all that kind of stuff, well, that, that somehow as a kid or something, I allowed that in, and I didn't understand, didn't know, and I got to a point in my life where it finally had to come to a head. Because if I didn't confront it, it was going to keep me from what God has for me in the future to do. Even though I might not fully know what that is, I might have seen little blips and visions and pictures and dreams He's, or said things to me. I have a little inkling of some of that stuff. I don't fully know, but I do. But, but if I didn't confront the spirit of fear and say, get out of my life and get victory over that and learn how to uh, combat that when it comes to where it, so it doesn't grab me around the neck anymore. It just like kind of grabs my toe and I just kind of smash it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yes. Because that's what will happen as you grow with God. Amen. The devil becomes less and less and less and less because you understand the word and you know that you have full authority and full victory. Amen. So you grow. Amen. Okay? You know, it's like Brother Hagin shared a story one time and, and I heard Bridget talk about this at prayer here a couple weeks ago. But I've heard Brother Hagin share this story a couple times where he had this dream, and in this dream, uh, he was in like this coliseum or this like, bait, like, like, a, like a football field type arena, type soccer arena, you know, a stadium. And he said he was out there, and he was standing next to this other pastor. And he said all of a sudden, they turned these lions loose, and these lions started coming after him. And he said, they begin to turn, and they begin to run, but he says, we were running from them. He said, I knew in my mind that I wasn't going to make it over that wall in time to get up in the stands. They were going to get us before we got there. We weren't fast enough. And so he said in this dream, I stopped, and I turned around. The other man kept running. I stopped, and I turned around, and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, stop. And I took authority over them in the name of Jesus, and they stopped and went back the other direction. God gave him a revelation on the authority that we have as a believer. And then he goes on to tell a story that one day he went to a church and this pastor came up to him and he said, Brother Hagen, I just want to let you know I've got the devil on the run. And he said, well, praise God, brother, we're glad. And he said, yeah, but the only problem is he's chasing me, you know. <laughs> and that's, he goes, brother, that's not how it's supposed to work. He's not supposed to be chasing you. You should be chasing him, you know what I mean? But see... <clears throat> That's one thing we've learned around here, and we've been taught, and we're, uh, we'll continue to be taught on the authority of the believer and who we are in Christ and what we have. Ephesians chapter 2 and 3 is huge. Just read those. That'll, 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 you'll get learning real quick. You know what I mean? So it says here that, beloved, verse 12, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but, verse 13, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part He is blasphemed, but on your part He is glorified. The devil tried to kill me with leukemia, but God said, you persecute my son. Well, guess what? My glory is going to be poured out even more on Mike Purcell, and I'm going to use him even more for glory. And that goes the same thing for you. Look at it that way, because that's what he just said right there, and that's the truth. They blaspheme, which brings judgment. When they blaspheme you, when they come against you, when they blaspheme Christ, when the devil tries to kill you, whatever, he hurts himself. He cuts his own head off. And God turns it around and he ends up getting all the glory for it. And the thing is, is 
the glory gets shown upon you and you're able to reach people that are in darkness. You'll be even be able to reach the people that were blaspheming you. I, I've, I know there was some people here in town, and I know them that they were talking about me. I know they were. They didn't like me. They thought I was crazy. They thought I was weird. I knew it for a few years. I kept it to myself. But a time came when all of a sudden I found myself in a position where I was around these people, and all of a sudden people were coming to me wanting prayer for a certain family member. And I was able to, by love, because, you know, our minds are stupid sometimes. Your flesh wants to go, that's your problem, not mine. Your flesh. But the love of God takes over. If you'll yield to it, it'll take over. And you'll have compassion. And I'm learning how to do that. And it's an awesome thing because, man, you want to talk about getting some stuff done, man, and growing fast. You start walking in that. You'll grow real fast. And so I reached out and I prayed for this family member, and I loved them. But see, even people that attack you, God will still use you for his glory to people, yeah. to the ones that even attack. That's right. yeah. Not every time, but sometimes that it'll come back around. We're able to, to, to bless them and to help them and to, and, to, and to encourage them or whatever it is they need. Amen? So when you're going through this, whatever it is, if you are, and if you're not, if you're sitting here going, man, I really don't. You know, I feel like things are going really good, and I'm learning a lot. Well, that's good, and that's a good thing. And, and all of us, we, we are, really. We're blessed. We are protected. We're loved. We're favored by God. We have victory. We have it, guys. It's ours. But if the devil can keep our minds clouded just focusing on what the issue is or whatever, then he's going to mess with you. So you just got to pull the sword out. Whatever the scripture is, God's given you to attack the enemy with. When he mouths off, pull it out and attack him. And if you have to attack him 30 times in one day with the yeah. same scripture, you, could, you attack him with it. Because, right. yeah. folks, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to give up. Nope. I don't think I have any quitters. There's no quitters in here, I don't think. Nope. I don't, they don't come on Sunday nights. Quitters... Quitters don't come ever. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, quitters, quitters never come is what I mean. That's what I meant to say. But I'm telling you, in Jesus' name tonight, if we will just decree and say what we've been saying, the time is now to say this place is a hospital. People are going to come and get healed, delivered, and set free. They're going to come and, and their li- this is how I'm saying it, their lives are going to be saved. There's doctors every day in hospitals that save people's lives. They bring them back to life or they do something to help them. Well, that's what God's going to do here spiritually and even naturally. We're going to see healings. We're going to see things take place. We're going to see families restored. I know that that healing is the dinner bell to salvation. (laughs) You think about it, you know, you're a sinner and one of your family members gets healed of stage four cancer just within a week. All of a sudden, there's no cancer in their body. Um, there's, you know, they're going to come to Jesus. They're going to know it's Jesus. They already have that hole in their heart anyways. They're searching for something. You know, that's what I believe. That's why I believe we're at. And if we'll start speaking it, we're going to start seeing more of it come. We're going to see people come during the week. We're going to see people come on Sundays during services. If, if. If every person that has walked by the front of this building over the years since we've been here in 2001 that I've just me talked to and asked when is service and I tell them, oh, I'm going to be there Sunday, we would have like 8,000 people right now. (laughs) But see, there's a drawing to this place. God's put us here for a purpose. Now, I know this place can't hold, this place, this room right here couldn't even hold 300 people probably. Legally. <laughs> but if it gets to something like that, then we'll have to just figure it out, whatever what we can. But I'm just saying that, listen, I just want to see families and people grow in the things of God. Amen. And I'm seeing it. And I know there's more out there that need to grow and need to come to Christ. Amen. So start speaking over this place. Get your mouths hooked up. Every time you think about your church, 
your body. Amen. Pray, for the, pray for your brothers. Pray for your sisters. Encourage them. Love. Amen. Behind closed doors, pray the love of God in their lives. Pray for Amen. them when you think about them. Because we're one in here, man. Amen. We're a unit together. We're together in here. We're doing this for one purpose, and that's for Jesus Christ. That's it. Amen. 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 I feel like I'm finished, so I don't know if you haven't. Yeah. Go ahead and stand up and share it. Come on up here so people can hear. I just had a little picture. Um, <clears throat> we were talking about when uh, Mike was talking about Thursdays and what's going on. Hold it up food, close. Food ministry there. I just had a little picture while that was going on, and it kind of developed the more that we talk. Okay. And and what's going on here on Thursdays is is there's there's ministry happening all over on that end, but also there's ministry happening in here that's going out into the airways. Mm-hmm. And so like there's like I saw like a whirlwind going it's this true. way. Of the spirit flowing. <clears throat> it's coming true. in through there and it's going out through the airways. And it's coming in through here and it's going out through the airways. You're and right. it's coming in through here and it's going out the airways. Amen. And so yeah. we're not only reaching the people in our community, yes. but the world's being reached yeah. right out, right <clears throat> out of this body true. right here. So be encouraged. Amen. Yeah, you're right. The Lord That's good. Continue, like Mike said, continue to speak that in Jesus' it's name. True. In Jesus' name. That is true. I didn't think about that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah, You know, Ron, I was, during worship as we were praising him tonight, I was aware that the, we were affecting the whole city tonight. Yeah, I heard you say Our that. worship was affecting the whole city. Mm. And there's, this place is a launching pad. There's, a, there's an open heaven <laughs> on this property, in this yeah. building. And angels come, and they are released. Yes. We've had prophetic confirmation from people that, uh, you know, don't really know our church that well or whatever about that and so we affect the atmosphere i remember one time there was a prayer meeting up in uh oh where was it it was uh, northern california city there up there there's a college there can't remember the name of it right now but anyway they were having this 24 7 thing go 24 hour thing going on for a few days and <clears throat> they were on the college campus praying it's the one cal- little college up there that's known as the chico chico state yeah the, the wildest party school yeah. in the nation or whatever and the police <laughs> chief called them about 24 hours in and said, what are you guys doing over there? He said, we don't, all, we don't have any calls. The crime is completely shut down in the city. Thank you, Jesus. They were affecting the city by what they were doing in the spirit. And, and so I saw that similar thing, not exactly like you saw it, but I saw it, you know, going on. And also, I want to say this. <laughs> I don't, probably some of you know, already know this because I mentioned it already. But when we were in Sacramento a couple of weeks ago and, and took some time just to go up there and pray and, and all that, I woke up that one morning, and God uses secular music and secular things to speak to me sometimes. I woke up that morning, and as I came out of sleep, that, that Bruce Springsteen song, Glory Days, was going through my mind, Glory Days. And they play it, you know, my grandkids play baseball, and they play at the baseball game. They play that song because it's about baseball and about a couple of guys sitting at a bar reminiscing about when they played baseball in high school and, you know, the glory days and all this. (laughs) And that song was running through my mind, and I've learned finally over the years to listen when something like that happened. And he he just showed me, he said, these are glory days. It's not about back when, you know, there was a glory back then, and there's going to be a glory in the future. Right. But, but we need to decree the glory of God is right. here. The glory of God is growing. The glory of God is working <laughs> in me. Yeah. And that this church is a glorious church. Yes. We need to pray for the other churches, speak it over them as well. But the Lord was telling me we need to begin to decree just what Mike was saying tonight. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it's, Paul says, I beseech you that you all speak the same thing. Yeah. What's God saying about your church? What yeah. are you about? Begin to decree it. Begin to speak yeah. it. Yeah. And as we do, it'll begin to happen. Because these are glory days. Amen. And you are going to walk in glory these days. Either. Matter of fact, I say tomorrow the glory of God, or tonight maybe even before you go to bed, Come on, man. the glory of God will in manifest name, in your man. life in one way or another. Fill my house. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Praise fill the, God. Fill the neighborhood. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Give it, let Tim. Yeah, just let's share, man. Um, I love Sunday night. I come in here and I see pictures. That's just how God speaks to me. Right. I get images and pictures. Um, I was here worshiping, and I, I just sent, turned around. And I sent something. There was an angel behind Liz. Next thing you know, boom. She, I didn't know it was Liz. I didn't know who was sitting back there. But I sensed the presence of an angel. Um, and I, the only reason I'm saying that is that 
I believe the Lord was showing me that we're sentinels here. We're watchers. We're watchmen. Yes. And that there, yeah. there are angels assigned to us because of that. Because okay, those yeah. angels get on the words that we see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that we speak. Yeah. Right. Um, there was an angel here behind Hannah. Um, the, the worship, the prophetic goes out. Thank you, Father. And as we speak what we see, those angels get on those words, mm. and then they perform them. Yes. 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 See, we're sentinels. We're Thank watchmen you, on the wall. It's yes. not an Thank accident you, that you're here. That's right. No. And so when we come, I don't like to miss on Sunday nights because there's a refreshing that comes yeah. here. So when I was there, and the Lord was giving me things, but I, I, I saw us, we were, um, the Lord showed me his throne room, the glory. <laughs> Thank you for the glory, Lord. I might not be able to talk about it, but. Um, Thank you for the glory, Lord. Hmm. There's a lot of room. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that we're going to go into above the glory. It's hard to explain. But God's pulsing glory love filled the place that we were above the glory. Like It's hard to explain, but there's a house above it. And we went into a lot of different rooms. We're going into a lot more rooms. And there's some doors that are going to be shut. So don't be surprised when things get shut. And things get opened. That sounds kind of like that stretching. Some where God's going to start stretching some of us. So the Lord different, yeah. different, different. Uh, not only just different areas in the natural, but different, different gifts, different things that we've never really operated in. God's going to start stretching us and and and, and using us in different different ways. He's going to start using us different ways. Than he has been, I guess. You could say that. You're talking about these other rooms we're going into. Well, I believe that God, that's just part of that stretching where God's getting ready to move us into some new things because it's a new season. And there has been, and we've been talking about the the season of the open door, the year of the open door. And so I really believe that. I mean, I saw that myself, that vision with the open door and Jesus standing there. And he went through the door as if, come on, follow me, you know. And Ezekiel 44.4 is my, about the glory, my mandate, my. (laughs) That's, every time I look at the clock, it's four, four, four. That's me too. That's and um, it's it's about the glory. The glory is here. Yes. We're containers it is. We've of keep, the glory. Keep speaking it and calling on and keep and, li- calling and it, living it. Just just lastly, though, Thank you, Lord. that that glory is connected to the angels. The angels are connected to us as sentinels, as watchmen. So I just want to say, watch for the new things. Amen. Yeah. There's yeah. new things. Yeah. Let's just step yeah, in. And, yeah. And there it is. And I know what Tammy's saying there because um, I, <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. I mean, even myself with me, with new, with new, the newness of God, there's, there's, God's doing a new thing. We hear that priest and all that kind of stuff. But I believe that because um, there's ways of thinking in my mind that I'm having to, okay, you know, I need to back off from those and enter into this something maybe I fully don't understand quite yet spiritually, but I'm willing to step out into it and learn from other people or other ministers or dad, you know, talking about some new revelation, something like that. I'm willing to learn that because there's, because listen, God's always growing. Things are always expanding in his kingdom. And um, anyways, I, I just, uh, we're growing. We, we need to, we need to keep growing spiritually. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I really feel compelled to say this. Yes. Nope. I know. Even the things that are happening in your life right now, circumstantially, and things that are in an uproar, things that are uprooted or shifted, and, you know, it's, I was just talking uh, before the service with someone about how such dramatic change on so many levels and with so many people. Yeah. The enemy is doing what he's doing. He's trying to intimidate. He's trying to sure. harass. He's trying to deceive. But God is repositioning everybody in, a, in their life 
He's repositioning people for what we're coming into and what we're yeah. beginning to walk in. Yeah. And even some of those things that you look at, it's kind of like that birth thing he was talking about. Yeah. It, you look at him and you go, whoa, this is crazy. This is painful. This is, you know, people are not acting like they normally act or whatever. God is, you know, it's, it's what he did with me in 2000. He forced me to face the Goliath of fear in my life. And I look back now, and it was not fun. It was intimidating. And there were days when I felt like I was going to go nuts. <laughs> yeah. But I look back now, and I needed to face that. And I needed to find out that all Goliath, every Goliath <laughs> made out of nothing but hot air and false prophecy. Yes, yes. And I don't care how big, bad, bad and ugly they are naturally, circumstantially. Right. They always fall for the same reason. Right. And that's because... The word of the Lord is more powerful than some demonic curse. Yes. And so don't let the enemy get you all, you know, agitated and out of sorts. You'll have those times where you have to stand against that fear, stand against sure. you know, even your own flesh or whatever. But you go back to that place that you know God, this is what God has said. Yeah. yeah. This is what God has said. And you just pull your sword out and use it. Yep. And keep using it. And you just watch, you'll take the ground. The Amen. devil wants us to back off from saying what God has said. He tries to lie to us and say, well, you said that too many times. It's not working. Just quit saying it. That's the, that, you know what I'm saying? So you just keep saying it until it comes to pass. Praise God. Amen. 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 Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Wow, well, what a good, good meeting tonight. Good gathering tonight. I just feel refreshed and blessed. And I'm just... I'm, I'm thankful that the glory of the Lord is going to visit our homes tonight. Hallelujah, as we go to bed. Praise God. Amen. Got a prayer request for a lady by the name of Sarah, uh, sick with flu-like symptoms, so they were asking for prayer. So let's pray for her. Amen? Yes. Lord, we thank you for Sarah. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that we can stand in agreement tonight together. For Sarah, in the name of Jesus, we command flu symptoms to loose her and to leave her physical body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you that the strength of heaven, the peace from heaven, the glory from heaven just rests upon Sarah right now in the name of Jesus. Wherever she's at, Lord, we release healing right now. We say the healing angels will go and minister and touch her right now. And I thank you that her life will never be the same. She'll have an encounter with you, Father, and your love and your healing and your glory right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for this week, Lord. Give us God divine appointments hallelujah use us for your glory lord let us bring light into darkness hallelujah and we thank you that every devil is under our feet in jesus name and we say tonight that we will agree with the decree in jesus name amen amen god bless you hallelujah have a good week amen welcome to the hospital